Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this is for Endless Fables Dark Moor. Now it was originally out for PC on Steam in 2019 but came to Xbox One just a few short weeks ago. Now this was developed by Sunward Games, published by Artifacts Monday and is available to you for just £12.49 or of course you could alternatively wait for a sale. Now if you've played Artifacts Monday games before, you would know the familiar style, graphics, the whole concept of the game, you know, the voice acting, etc. It's all there in this game. And once again, the story is pretty much extremely interesting and fun throughout. But you will notice something missing, and that is once again all of the background noise. Because sadly, it seems every Artifacts Monday game at the moment, the background music gets absolutely copyrighted, which is absolutely frustrating as I found the music, especially in this game, was it was kind of a nice relaxing edge off while you're searching for what you need. It really fitted in well with the game, well with the story, but hey, it is what it is. So what I've done instead is put in some music by the absolutely epic Family Jewels 7X, so hopefully it won't be too much of a distraction for you. And of course, my godlike, booming, sexy ass Welsh voice, obviously, <laughs> maybe not. Um, but still, I am talking through the game, so there's always something to look forward to, eh? But again, you know, like I said, hopefully that won't distract you from playing and enjoying this fantastic game. Now, as for achievements, it's your standard list, albeit slightly different this time. There's plenty of story-related ones. But for uh, hidden object puzzles and mini-games, we have to complete a hidden object puzzle in less than 90 seconds uh, without a mistake and for not using hints. And the mini-games... Uh, all for no hints, and the biggest one is complete 8 mini games in under 60 seconds. But don't worry though, as there are plenty to get through. Also, we are grabbing 18 collectibles. There is one, as you can see, just to the left of the guy we'll be grabbing in a moment after our little tutorial. And I do think that's everything covered then, finally, so we can actually finally begin. So, as you've been seeing then, this first part, it just tells you how to go through the game. Don't worry about using a hint at this point. It, it's it just tells you exactly what to do, just so you know, in case you're new to Artifacts Monday games. If you're not, then you'll know exactly how they all work. So it tells you sort of what to pick and what to grab for now. Um, for the most part, when you do um, get into an area and you've got to pick up a few things, if you've picked up everything in that little area, it'll normally automatically back out if you do get stuck. But you shouldn't with uh, this point. So... So telling you all what you need, you've got your map, we won't really use our map at all. Um, now we're using a hint, but like I said, it won't affect any achievements, so don't worry about that. And we can finally pick up our first collectible, which is a pumpkin on the left. And the other style of collectibles are, once again, morphing objects, but there's only 18 again throughout the entire game. Oh, right, so... <laughs> Jeez, man, I'm getting too old for this again. So what we're doing then is fixing up the cart so we can move on. We've grabbed, the game's told us what we need to grab. Uh, so just put the, grab your lighter. It's the left and right trigger to bring up your inventory. And then it's usually X to use something. So uh, press the A button here, grab the hatchet, use the A button on it. And we will be doing our first hidden object puzzle. Now I'm pretty sure that these hidden object puzzles... I'm pretty sure they're, they're the exact same in every game. Um, again, if you if you do get stuck with a hidden object puzzle, you can do a game of pairs instead. But I always found it easier to just do the hidden object puzzles. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they're all the same. Um, if anyone's watching and playing along, let me know if it is randomized. But I'm pretty sure these hops are all the same. So you should know what to do by now. Just find hidden objects. It's as simple as that.
So that's the first one down. We've got a mechanical jack. Um, I mean, I don't know why you literally couldn't have just found the mechanical jack and picked it up and gone away. But anyway, that's none of my business. I suppose it wouldn't be a fun game that way unless we had a whole bunch of other crap to collect. <laughs> so here we go. Click on the cart, click on the jack, grab the wheel, and then press X to get up the inventory. Use your hammer. And that's it. First achievement unlocks of the game. I mean, obviously, I won't be speaking through the entirety of the game, which I know is just so sad for you guys and gals, because I know you love listening to me. <laughs> no, that's all a lie. Don't worry, I know that. Um, but now we are moving on. We finally fixed the car, and now we're outside an old lady's house. Um, I tell you what, to be honest, some of the uh, enemies... That, well, I say enemies, this, this sort of enemies. This is one of the artifacts' most creepier games that they have released, to be honest. And it's, again, thoroughly enjoyable, thoroughly interesting. Um, to be honest, mind, even the humans look a bit creepy in this game, don't they? So, <laughs> the ghosts and that are going to look even worse. So, just smash through. Don't, I just smash through the dialogue. You can press and hold the B button to skip if you want. But, you know, I'm nice like that. I just sort of interrupt her because... Screw that, ain't got time to listen to you, Han, sorry. But we've got a pair of shears now, which always works well. So go to the left, back out, out of the house, go to the left and use the shears on this little bit of bramble right here. And then what we can do then is just pick all the berries, because we'll be making a nice little birthday cake for Big Nora. I say Big Nora, she's little. She's 11, so she's not going to be big. And unless she was a you know, fat child, then, then she'd be big. Anyway, I don't know, I'm just yammering on now. So this is our first mini game that is coming up then. And what we need to do is just basically finish the decorations on the cake. Um, this is the first time you can get the first mini game in under 60 seconds. So put the berries down there. Um, we need to get three flowers. Just ignore that, completely ignore that for now. So grab three flowers. There's one on the left, top left, one in the sort of top right, and one on the sort of bottom left. But make sure to grab the little crusher so we can grab the uh, crush the berries first. Then you can grab the flower right there. There is another one that's kind of hidden in plain sight. Whoops, didn't actually mean to do that then. But it's just to the right of the cake, so pop that on. And now what you need to do is put the blue on the right, the yellow or green in the middle, and the whatever that color is, purple, on the left-hand side. Sorry, I'm not very good with colors. I'm slightly colorblind. But anyway, that unlocks the Sweet Tooth achievement, which again is story related, cannot be missed. And as, uh, grab the drawing off her, and as for all the sort of mini games and stuff that uh, you come across, there'll always be a little diagram of how it needs to be done. Usually in the sort of bottom right corner, bottom left, but it'll always be sort of somewhere at the bottom. Just in case you're thinking, how the hell is he doing that? There's always a diagram of what you need to do. So now then we're waking up, and oh my god, there's a floating goddamn teddy bear. And my leg! This guy's broken his leg! I don't know the hell that's happened, but you know, Teddy Bear mashed him up bad. So once we stop freaking out, then there is a collectible on the right hand side. One of the, the first out of ten morphin collectibles, anyway. So eventually. You know, don't be put off or scared by the floating friggin' teddy bear or anything. You should be good. So go to the bottom drawer of the desk, of, of the uh, chest of drawers or whatever that is. We just got the collectible. Grab the tweezers. Uh, we'll need to fill this little page in later. So don't even worry, your sweet ass, about that. Go to the left-hand side on the desk with the guy slumped up against and grab the tape. And now we'll be doing... Well, it's, it's not really a mini game. This is just easy. So press X, get the drawing up. And you just have to copy exactly, uh, put all the toys exactly the way it is in the drawing right there. This one's extremely easy, even though I got it wrong. <laughs> Trust me, it is easy. I wouldn't steer you wrong, you know. There we are, look, see, I told you. <laughs> Make sure to grab the two clover pieces, as of course we'll need them a little bit later on. But now we can head back downstairs. And we'll be grabbing the swallow symbol and a matchbox as well. And then click on the bottle and use the tweezers on that bottle to get out a postcard piece. Delicious. So once we're done with that, head up the stairs, look, move the cat out of the way. You'll get a clover piece, but you can 
press A to move him out of the way, which we eventually do. And then just to the left of him, then you can get out this next uh, swallow, <laughs> spit or swallow. But we don't need him yet, so go back downstairs, grab the stinking cloth, and then use the matchbox on this little lamp right here. And then just go into the drawers and pick up a clover glasses and a wooden bore. That should be your three out of three clover glasses now. And now what we'll need to do, you see a little plus shape there. Press the Y button. Uh, whenever you see a Y plus, that basically means that we can fill in um, certain items on this object. So obviously we'll be getting our three clover glasses, popping them on. And that is job done. So now click on the little table to the left again. We'll be using our little four-leaf clover, which... Isn't it really lucky to get a four-leaf clover? Yes, that's why we're going to get a thousand gamer score in this game. Pure luck and skill. Well done, everyone. Anyway, get the golden ring nails out of there. Go back into Nora's room then. And now we'll be using the postcard piece. So go into where the collectible was earlier on. And now press X. We'll be using the two postcard pieces. And use the tape now to seal that up. Yum, yum. I don't know what's yummy about that, but anyway. So we've got the postcard, and now we can get the Nightmare Catcher Amulet. So what this basically does is allows us to now fight this ghostly goddamn ghost bear. So press the down button on the D-pad to get your Nightmare Catcher Amulet out. And it sort of plays as a mini game now, as you will see. It's a very easy mini game, but you, you, there's no health, you don't die or anything like that you can take your time as long as you want so use it on him but you'll see you've got two runes on the left and three sort of symbols on the right what you have to do is pick the symbol on the right which is not on the left hand side so just take your time have a look at all the symbols on the left hand side and pick the one on the right which is not on the left i hope i made that very clear um, if you do get it wrong, it sort of comes up with um, sort of flashing rune and it'll look like it hurt you, but it actually doesn't. And you know when you've got it right because it'll slash the bear or slash the enemy. And that's it. So it's, so it's not bad, you know. It can potentially get a little bit frustrating, but just take your time with it. So here we go then. This should be it now. Your first proper enemy defeated. That gives us another two achievements, which is just perfect. And you also get a crystal out of it, and we'll be needing to collect five to save Nora's ass. Right, very important hidden object puzzle coming up now. If you do exactly what I do here, you will get two achievements. One for completing it in under 90 seconds, and one for not making a mistake. So just take your time, be very careful, and do exactly as I do here. There are easy hidden object puzzles coming up in the um, within the game anyway. So don't worry if you haven't got it in this one, you can get them again, but I just found it easier to just get it out of the way now, so yeah. So hopefully you would have got the two achievements there. If not, again, there are very easy hidden object puzzles a bit later on. So don't worry if you haven't got them. I will help you guys out because I goddamn love you. Anyway, we're back downstairs now. Go to the left, which is just at the top of the stairs. We're going to be um, putting the hairpin into the sort of a spit and swallow symbols to grab that one. So that should be two out of two now, the spit and swallow symbols that we have. Now we're going back into Nora's room. And now we can use the spit and swallow symbols on the left hand side uh, in this little um, bit of chest piece thing right here. Open that up and it's again, it's another little mini puzzle game. Just remember we've got to do eight in under 60 seconds. This isn't the start of it. We have to get the um, postcard. So get the postcard up 
uh, by pressing the right button and make sure to turn it around because I that confused me for some reason and I got no idea why. So, <laughs> go on. there it is, there it is. I eventually stop being stupid. And now this is the postcard we can use. Again, just copy, there's only a few buttons to press, just copy the exact same ones that I do in under 60 seconds and that's another one added to the list. So there's that one done then, and what you'll also obviously realise is that I kind of go quite slow as well, so I'm not rushing about and you're having to pause it every two seconds, um, which is what I'm going to do with most of the puzzles in this game as well. So especially for this one as well, so don't worry if you think, oh Christ, you're being a jerk, I do try and go as slow as I can, but obviously there are there's loads of mini games we can get in under uh, 60 seconds anyway, so use the golden ring now on this statue outside and there's these little symbols that we need to collect certain ones again in another order so use the small disc that you just got from the box upstairs and then again just copy exactly the same symbols that I do I do go slow for you so hopefully you can uh, tag along in real time So there's another beauty done, so now we can get the uh, keychain, and obviously I forgot to say, um, you will get, with the postcard puzzle a little bit earlier on, you should have got an achievement for doing too many games in under 60 seconds, so we've already only got 6 left. So now we can just get rid of the rusty chain and the key here. Uh, there is a particular point, now it's not, it, it, they haven't done it. In a lot of Artifacts Monday games, but there, there are particular points that you actually need to cl uh, click and interact with now for uh, items to disappear or to take off, etc. So, <laughs> yeah, a, a good little touch, mind. But now we can use the chain on the where we cut the brambles earlier and got the berries. And that gives us a bell, which we need to get rid of the sheep. Literally don't know why we couldn't have just run at the sheep, or if you're Welsh, could have shagged them or eaten them. But still... <laughs> hey, we've got to use a bell on him, apparently. A bit of a bit more hard work, but there we go. We're through anyway. And we're on to the next part of the game now. So there is our next enemy on the right-hand side. But first, we're going to click on the left on the chessboard and grab a coin. And we'll also be grabbing a wooden hunting piece. Because apparently it sounds like we're going vampire hunting. When actually it's just a floating pumpkin with eyeballs all around him. Nice and spooky. That's a nice spooky touch. Uh, the hunting piece, by the way, as you've just seen by the skeleton there. So now we can move on into this sort of tiny little village. And now we'll be... Well, we'll be heading into the church first, which is directly in front of you. And it's where another collectible is. After you get slightly jump scared there <laughs> with the ghost. But the collectible... Pumpkin right by the statue on the right hand side. But go ahead, take a look at the organ first. We'll be getting a chess piece off here. Uh, this is just another little puzzle we'll be coming to later on. I mean, I'm sure you get the premise of the game by now. You, you don't get anything for free and nothing for easy in this freaking game. And just to the right of that then, 
grab the candle, we'll be turning that sand timer over three times to get a little crystallized, but there is a, uh, a wooden hunting piece that you should have just picked up right there. But yeah, the sand timer you will be turning over a couple of times, three times, and we'll be getting one of the crystal eyes. But what you can do for now is use the two wooden hunting pieces on another wooden hunting piece, and we'll get ourselves an insignia. Which is basically just like a little symbol we'll need to open up a chest later on. <laughs> so go ahead and do that. And then just nip up to the right side of the organ, where we were a little bit later on, to get the sand timer. And all you got to do is open up the lid. So click on the lid, and we'll get a crystal little ball sack. So that's us done in this room for now. Now we can go back to the village square. And we'll be going to get pissed. Hey! Well, while all the ghosts and stuff are happening, let's go for a drink. Because I tell you what, you, you get scared in real life, the first thing you want to do is go for a nice cold, a nice ice cold beer. Oh. oh, man, I could do one of them right now. Anyway, skip through the dialogue. Let's just get through my uh, slight alcoholism right here. <laughs> just get through that, and that gives us our second crystallized. But there are another couple of collectibles in here. There's a morphing one where I am right now and eventually it will appear and there you go that's the second one and then just to the left of the barman there is a pumpkin if you interact with the sort of newspapers that's two collectibles you should have got there so click on these sort of newspapers and things uh, get a barrel as well uh, click on the guy on the right hand side who's a bit off his nut click on his fingers four times and that'll grab his keys and then grab yet another barrel and we're just going back to where the barman is. You've got to click on the actual newspaper. You've got to click on it three times. And that gives us our first puzzle piece out of three. So just before we miss it. You shouldn't miss it anyway. But, you know, trying to do it smoothly didn't work. So go on to the unused table on the left. What you'll need to do now is actually use the tablecloth on it to pick up the glass shard. And then grab the cutlery as well while you're there. And that's your third wooden jug. Sorry, it's not a barrel, it's a wooden jug. So, you know, my bad. If anyone's... If anyone hates me for that, please don't hate me. It's all good. Now we'll be going up and talking to the only sober guy in the joint. Oh, oh never mind. He's got a knife wound in. Looks like he's on meth, but that's okay. We're all cute. So he's going to be playing a little game with us now. Uh, you'll be using all your wooden jugs. Basically, it's just a game of where is the dice. And it's always the same for you. The first one will be number one, number two, and number three. That's the order it is, from left to right. That's what you pick the order in. I mean, he says we're lucky, but, you know, he, he's so methed up and he's blind in one eye, he doesn't actually know that he's not even going that quick. So, up your guts, son. Up your guts. Anyway, we've got some more coins. We're going back to the old village square. Use the crystallize on the gate, which is just to the right of the church. And this is another hidden object puzzle. Now, this is a very easy one. And this is one that you can do if you didn't get it in under 90 seconds earlier. Um... And you, and you didn't do it without making a mistake. This is one where you can get it. So basically, he's going to tell a story. And what you need to do is find the things that he um, got out in capital letters. But you don't have to do that. Again, you can just copy exactly as I do here. And you should literally have no problems if you want an easier time to get those two hidden object puzzle achievements earlier. But if you do want to listen to the story, listen to it and make sure to find the things that he says in capital letters.
So that is the gate opened up, and there's even easier hidden object puzzles later on if you still haven't got them yet. So again, do not panic. But the first thing we're going to be doing then, there's a hidden object puzzle on the left, but there is also a hidden collectible, muffin collectible, just under the left-hand side of the sort of fish stall right there. So be, make sure to grab that collectible nice and quick, and then crack on with this HOP, or this hoppity hop hop hop. So that's us with the fish. Again, couldn't have just picked it off the hook, but there we go. Go ahead and grab the hook, and then use the hunting insignia now on this little chest right here. That'll get us a map case, nails, fisherman's journal, rake, oil can, and a hammer. So pick it all. Again, once you pick it all, it'll automatically back out. So don't uh, panic if you've missed anything or if you think you have. And we're backing out now to the village square and just to the left of the church you can see a little cart. Use your key and your oil can on it. This will open it up and basically it plays again like a sort of small little puzzle. So just interact with and click the exact same things that I do um, after using the coins to operate it. And after we do that we will get our second out of three puzzle pieces. Easy cheesy lemon squeezy right? Yeah, I just think sometimes it's nice and easier to give you a break from this booming godlike Welsh voice. <coughs> Lol. Uh, <laughs> during the uh, sort of mini games and puzzles, etc. So now we're back to where we began. Go to where the skeleton is again. Use the old breaky boy. Um, rake him up and get the musical score. Again, why couldn't you just use your hands? Yeah, yeah. Lazy, this Pamela chick is goddamn lazy. But what we are going to be doing is another um, mini game. So you're going to be using the chest puzzle piece on here. And you have to do it in a way that you don't actually go over the same um, piece of board twice. Very easy. But, you know, just for, again, exactly follow exactly what I do right here. And you should have no problems with it. But just be sure to take your time with it as well. Because it can, it does get quite... So tricky towards the end. I'm not a chess. P I'm not a chess player, so I'm pretty thick. But you know, I do this well just for you guys. Okay, stop talking now.
There we go, that's done. Get your third puzzle piece. Hopefully that wasn't too much of a chore and you could sort of follow along well. I'm very much hoping so. Um, <laughs> because that turned my head in the first time, actually. But now we are going back to the church and we'll be... There's a... As you can see on the right-hand side, next to the statue, we'll be using these three puzzle pieces now. This, again, this is a very easy bit of puzzle. All, all we'll be doing is... Um, turning two of the triangle puzzle pieces around, but it's not really not that complicated at all. If you want to see the finished product, just go ahead and skip to 34 minutes and 30 seconds. So this puzzle's very easy as well, but one thing you have to note, you've got to go upwards, not down. So press up four times on the first one. On the second one, press up four times. On the third one, press up two times. And that's it, you should be good to go now. Uh, so that'll get us another crystal to add to the nightmare cat, uh, the nightmare catcher amulet, which we can now use once again on the floaty eye pumpkin head boy on the right hand side, and it's exactly the same puzzle as it was with the floating weird teddy bear earlier. All the runes on the left hand side. All you have to do is pick the symbols, which are on the right hand side, which are not on the left hand side. So do it exactly as you've done earlier. Again, no pressure, no time. You don't die or anything, so happy days. So that's enemy number two then, creepy ass scarecrow. Uh, just to the left of him, click on the little gate and get the another collectible, the next pumpkin collectible. And now we'll be needing to get this boat right out here, so click on that again. On the same gate where we just got the collectible, obviously. Uh, but what we'll need to do is use the glass shard on it to open up the gate, and uh, which will give us a rope and a ladder. Use the rope on the hook to get a hook with rope, and then use the hook on the rope, on the boat, and then we will, what we'll be doing is solving the hidden object puzzle. Sorry, I couldn't remember what it's called then. And once again, we're getting into losing my mind territory. Once again, you've got to collect, uh, click the certain points to tie up the ropes, which is again, I find a little nice touch that from Artifacts, to be honest. So now we can use the hook on the rope again, get him over here, and we'll be getting a smuggler's purse. Again, 
you won't be just grabbing it because we'll actually be using the uh, doing the hidden object puzzle. Fun. So again, that gives us the smuggler's bag. What we can do is actually look inside the smuggler's bag and that gives us a firecracker, which we need for getting some more things. But yeah, with the hidden object puzzles, I do try to go as sort of quick as I can. I mean, my, my thing is sort of Jeremy Clarkson style speed and power, just speed and power and hopefully I click it all, but it doesn't always work like that. Um, but, but anyway, go back to the hidden port now. There's a box with a rat just on the right hand side opposite the ship there. Use the firecracker, use the lighter, or the candle, sorry, and that's going to explode that. <laughs> and the rat does this sort of cool ass, don't look back at explosions things. Use the hammer, you'll need to use the hammer quite a lot because we'll be needing to collect five boards. So remember to keep using the hammer and then you have to uh, pick up all five boards. It doesn't automatically do it for you. By the way, you should have picked up the organ key as well while you were in that box. Uh, now what we need to do, get out the ladder, get out the boards and the nails. And again, another little clever thing. It's not an automatic thing. You've actually got to place the correct um, boards to the correct location so obviously that small one isn't going to work but the big ones do so again very uh, little clever details make these games absolutely great and this is just another added <laughs> exception to be honest i really really do thoroughly enjoy these types of games but use the nails use the hammer everyone should know how they work by now i think the hammer bit should be fine you don't have to do that manually <laughs> thank god but that gets us a ladder now we'll be using the ladder just above where we got the board lock, it's sort of up in this little bit of attic as we need, a, well, next to the window, just on the right hand side, not attic. Go ahead, whip your fishy fish fish out, give it to the cat, and we can get Mr. Whiskers, who, by the way, is just a cute little fluff ball, fat little fluff ball. <laughs> anyway, that gives us another achievement, so now we can move back, we are heading on to the old church now. And now we can use the music notes and the organ key on the organ. Now, from left to right on with the symbols, uh, it's one to five. Do it in this order. Three, two, one, five, four. So if the left one is one and the right one is five, three, two, one, five, four. Or just copy again exactly what I do. And with that, that gives us a little anchor, and we can actually use that anchor symbol on the old Fisherman's Journal. And that'll get us some coordinates. Sorry, has anyone ever tasted those Fisherman Friends? They are goddamn delicious. I love those minty bobs. <laughs> they are so nice, Fisherman Friends. But anyway, just keep skipping through the book, look, and this is where we get the coordinates at the very end. So we're almost done with the first chapter now. It's only taken us 40 odd minutes, which is great. Now we're going into the end. Get a quick beer down you. And before we use 
before we give the bar owner his Mr. Whiskers back. A cute little fat fluff ball. And with that, he gives us the map symbol. Ah, he's like a little match made in heaven. Fluffy mustache and fluffy fluff ball. So with that, we can use the map symbol on the map case to actually get a torn map. Which will help. I suppose torn map is better than no map at all. And then what we can also do then is as soon as we get this map out. It looks like a dildo, but it's nothing like that, I swear. Uh, go to the smuggler, go to the meth head. Give the meth head his meth bag. I mean smuggler's bag, sorry. And he'll give you a compass. And then we can go to port. And we'll be doing the last mini puzzle game before we get to the next chapter. So you've got the compass now, so now we can go back to port. And it's very, very easy when you know what you're doing. So go ahead, click on the boat. And then use everything that you've got. So use your coordinates, use your tone map, use your compass, get them all out. And what you have to do then, so for the inner circle, as soon as you click on the compass on the right hand side. So what we'll be doing is basically matching the inner and outer circles up. Very easy, it's, it's not hard at all. So all you have to do then is move the inner circle to the right hand side and that will actually join up with the outer circle. Happy days, click on the outer circle, drag it round to where it says 280 and it'll automatically pop you there. Job is a good one! We are done with the first chapter, happy days. So we are on our way to chapter 2. By the way, top accents today, am I right? <laughs> Wink. No. So he's not looking like a nice fluffy horsey, he's looking like a bit of a sort of undead dick. But he's gone now, so you just pre you should have pressed A to click on the branch, that'll get us through to the sort of little mansion here. Grab the collectible, which is on the very left hand side first, and another morphin collectible, which is just on the right hand side, at the top, on the tree. So make sure to grab those two collectibles, one's left, one's right, and then we can move on. So click on the torch right here. And go ahead, pick up the engraving tool. And we'll also be need to be picking up some coal as well. And then go ahead and solve the hidden object puzzle to get a chain of initials. So all we're doing then, it, basically finding the sort of blue uh, looking chain of, well, initials. Easy. Honestly, it was easier than I just made it out to be. Um, I, I don't know what I was doing wrong, but <laughs> I wasn't doing very good with that. Oh, I mean, that is a scary looking ghost enemy, that, to be fair, isn't it? 
So look in the sort of water fountain on the right to get the valve first. That's a creepy looking ghost, man. That's ridiculous. Look at the statue to get the garden shears uh, first of all. And then there is a screw which will be on the door to the left, the sort of main door. There's the screw, so pick that one up. And then what we'll be doing is using the screw on the garden shears to get, well, more garden shears. And this is a, a that's an easy puzzle we're going to be coming to again a little bit later on, as is the norm of the game. So, pop your garden shears in, pop your screw in, jobs are good in. And now we go to the mansion gate. So we'll be going backwards. There we go. And now what we can do is use the garden shears on the skeleton, which is right in front of us. Now, uh, again... Easy mini game, just copy exactly what I do. I do kind of sort of mess it up at the end though, so just be aware. But it, it's you just got to move the rib cages in a certain order, so it's not that bad, not that hard. Even though I do mess it up at the end. See, I told you it was one of them. <laughs> one of them had to work, didn't it? So that gets us the skull. Now we can go back into the courtyard to the statue on the left-hand side and use the chain of initials and the skull. And that will balance that out lovely. Happy days. And now that actually opens up the gate for us. So now we can go ahead and nip inside. That This gets us to this sort of creepy-looking graveyard bit. Grab the pumpkin on the right-hand side just underneath the statue there. So first of all then, click on, well you can click on either one, but we'll be going for the left side first, where we get the stone book and the first out of two jewels. Click on the right hand side statue then, and grab the torch. After the magpie, pity death. There you go, so grab the torch, and then what we can do is use the coal on the torch to get a torch. That's mad, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it mad how things work? But after this, then, we'll be going straight back to the mansion gate. So, go ahead, back out just a couple of times. And here we go. And then what you'll do is use the torch on the torch to get a lit torch. Again, something baffles me as to why you couldn't have just scooped it out like a little ice cream cone and carried it with you. But I suppose it would be a real short game, then, if we couldn't do that, eh? <laughs> I suppose. But what we'll be doing now, uh, just to the grate on the right-hand side, use the lit torch on that to get an eye. Mm -hmm. And your first out of two relief pieces. And now we'll be going back to the courtyard. And we'll be, there's a little puzzle on the left-hand side of the fountain right here. Use the eye on the M. And again, copy exactly as I do here because it's very easy. Basically, we're not supposed to go over the same thing twice. That's all it is. Go ahead then, after that, use your valve, press on it, beautiful, now what we need to be doing is going to the mansion gate, we'll be doing another hidden object puzzle, as there are still plenty of them to do, so go ahead, back out, it's just on the right hand side, I mean you can't miss it, because it's all flashy and pretty and stiff. So again, little hidden object puzzle, we'll be getting uh, another jewel at the end of this. Next, we are heading back to the crypt entrance. Now, this is the first um, mini game or this puzzle that really done my tits in, in all fairness. So, what we have to do, obviously, use both the jewels on it, and the 
solution you can see is just at the bottom there. So we need to get all the grey pieces onto the left hand side and all the orange pieces onto the right hand side. But obviously it's not as easy as that. So what you'll need to do, um, basically every time you put one round, there's another one that about four pieces back that goes along with you. So the first part honestly is easy enough. It's when you get to the end where it starts to get a little bit trickier. I do apologize, I'm not really the best at explaining, which is annoying, but it is very easy first. It's when you get to this point, sort of at the end, and you've got one piece that won't go the other way, and one piece that won't sort of go the other way, and it really starts to piss you off. The best way i done it was to get one of the grey pieces actually on the top. It's all to do with sort of turning the right hand and left hand side, so... But the best bit of advice I can give you when you get to this point, get the grey piece on top and one of the orange pieces on bottom. Go to the left hand side one, turn that down the other way and then that should hopefully work. I know it was a pain in the ass, it pissed me off so much this ending. I was stuck on it for about 10 minutes but things like that are really hard to explain. Um, it's just best to sort of show you and hope that you can copy me well. But anyway, inside the crypt now there's a morphine collectible on the right hand side as you can see where I'm just sort of shaking it about now. But yeah, puzzles like that can be tricky to explain. Again, hopefully you got it though, no problem. But go on to the left-hand side now and grab the little jug. And then over to the right-hand side, we'll be using our engraving tool and then pressing it. And that will get us the second relief out of relief, book symbol, chess symbol, and our first out of third portrait. Make sure to pick all them up. Once you've done there then, use the book symbol on the stone book to get your first out of three gate buttons as well. Definitely make sure to pick that one up. Otherwise you might be, get a bit confused and think, well, this dick steered me wrong. And I would never steer you guys wrong. You know that. So don't actually back out here again. We need to be getting uh, using the stone book on the statue on the right. So go back into the crypt courtyard there, or the crypt entrance. Use the stone book on the statue on the right to get your second out of three gate buttons. There we go. So we make it eventually. We always make it eventually. Uh, <laughs> as long as it's not too slow, because, you know, nobody would watch and everyone would be pissed off. And I don't want that. Under the left hand side then, use your two relief pieces and then press it twice to get the chest. There it is, yum yum, I've got to stop saying yum yum, that just makes no sense of stuff. Uh, go, <laughs> go back to the courtyard, use the empty jar on the water and then so go ahead and grab that. Now that's considered yum because water's not bad for you, right? Unless you got some vodka in it or something. Anyway, go back to the crypt entrance, click back on the statue, and go ahead and use the water on that, first of all. And then we can pick these, uh, well, they're called herbs, but they are flowers, aren't they? Uh, go to the uh, bit of piece on the left, just to the right of this bit is, uh, use the water again so we can get some more herby herbs or some flowers. And then go back inside the crypt then. So you should have two flowers or two herbs by now. Sorry, my bad. That was another mistake of mine. We're going back into the crypt. And head to the right-hand side. Oops, I left something behind earlier. Uh, <laughs> make sure not to do that. Um, whoops. I steered you wrong and I'm so sorry. Uh, use the water then. Get the flower from this point. And then make sure to pick that up. And on the left-hand side, you can just see like a little sort of flowery thing right there. Pop your herbs in and we'll be doing a, another hidden object puzzle on the uh, sort of mummy grave type looking thing there. And damn, you're fit for a ghost. Uh, I mean, uh, ah, what a nice ghost. Uh, don't worry, I, d I don't look at like ghost porn or anything. That's just, <laughs> that's just strange, right? Let's just move on. Just do your goddamn hidden object puzzle and just forget I said stuff. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man.
Uh, with that, that gives us a cheeky little phoenix pendant. So what we're going to be doing is using that same pendant and the chest symbol on the chest and select the wings in the appropriate correct order until the chest opens and that will be our third out of three gate buttons. In fact, there's no particular order. You just keep uh, clicking them until the wings go all the way up. There we go. Third out of three gate buttons and now we can finally begin to enter the mansion. Let's so go back to the courtyard. Nothing in here for us now. We've, <laughs> we've bled it dry. We've emptied that. Back to the courtyard, back up to the door. And again, as I said earlier, this is a very simple puzzle. Very, you know, easy enough. you just got to copy exactly as I do. But if you want to see the finished product, go ahead and skip to 5840. And that finally gives us the key so we can finally enter the mansion. But what appears is some weird ass ghost thing on the left hand side. Now. Or I don't know, what's, what's one of those Venus flight? He just, he's basically a vegetable, but with a skull for a face, so not bad. Make sure to grab the collectible on the right hand side, the morphing collectible on the right top hand side at the top of the banister. Then click on the left hand knight, make sure to grab the second out of three portraits. And then click the right hand knight and grab the crown. Which is actually left of the knight there, it's just behind a bit of wallpaper as you can see it flashing, there it is. There we go, we got that now, you, you can keep jerking off his sword if you want but... That would make you night sexual. I don't even know what that is. Uh, go up the stairs just a little bit now. And just by the door, there is another morphing collectible for us to pick up. So make sure to grab that one there before heading to the right-hand side window and grabbing the cleaning cloth and the turpentine. And go ahead, click on the glass pane. Click the first one at the top, the second screw at the bottom, and that'll get us that pane. Uh, now if we just head back out, go actually onto the left hand door right there, the only door that's in the point. Use the crown symbol on that and we'll have to do a little maze. It's again, not too bad. All you're doing is basically sort of going to the right. It's not hard at all. I promise, again. By the way, if you've been following along, this is where you should get your Faster Than Lightning achievement for, for completing 8 minigames in under 60 seconds. If you don't have it yet, do not worry, there are still plenty of minigames and that left to go. But obviously, you know, you, you should be fine, but just in case, I wouldn't panic too much because we're still not even on the last chapter yet. So once we're into this room then, click on the, uh, st uh, the um, ladder, of course. Ha! To get a charcoal, pe uh, the ribbon, sorry, first, and then down by the fireplace, that is where we get the charcoal pencil. And then go ahead, click on the desk, click on the newspapers four times. You get a gun, you also get um, a helmet ornament as well, damage revolver. Use the cleaning cloth on the sort of spill, and that gives us an oiled cloth. Now we can go back to the foyer, the mansion foyer, for just a second. And now it's back then to touching up the old statues, or the knights, sorry. So click on the left one first, and then go ahead, use the turpentine on it. That'll get you the turpentine jar and the first out of second, uh, first out of two tiles. There you go. And that's right on his junk. I tell you, that's a dirty get, hasn't cleaned his junk for years. That's disgusting. <laughs> but anyway, go to the second knight, use the helmet ornament on him, and that will give you the second out of two tiles. So, yep, you can jerk his sword off again if you want, but that's really, really not necessary. So now we're back into the corridor, and we'll be using the two tiles on the uh, sort of desk at the back, on the ornament next to the statue, or the, the little, whatever the hell that is, wooden guy. And then use the charcoal pencil on it as well, and that'll get us a bookshelf arrangement. And... 
Well, we'll be using it right away. So go ahead, go into the study on the left-hand side there. And again, this isn't really a puzzle, I don't think. All you got to do is the bookshelf on the very left where the ladders are. Put the bookshelf arrangement out and it's just really easy. And then when the bookshelf arrangement is done, the four codes, the four sort of numbers and codes you see on the left-hand side. Again, just like the little one from earlier, you've got to go up. So if you see numbers, if you go down and go to the numbers, it won't work. You've got to go up to the numbers. So again, just keep that in one in mind. So that gets our final portrait and a coin, which is always handy. So go to the desk now, because what we'll be doing is using the coin on the sort of wheel arch sort of thing right here. That'll get us a wheel, which will always be handy. So now back out, go to where the ladder is, and now we can put the wheel on the sort of bearing or ladder extra thingy majigger. But anyway, what that's going to do is help us move along. So tighten it up with the coin as well. And now we can finally get up into the attic. So we are almost coming to the end of chapter 2 now as well. So get your ass in there. And man, this is an uglier cat. Definitely an uglier version of the cat, sorry. He's not the best, cutest looking fluffball in the world. But there is a collectible right here, just on top right there. So go ahead and grab that. Might take a while for it to come down. By the way, you've actually got to pull the cloth off the mirror yourself. That doesn't happen automatically. And you don't have to click on it for now. We'll be come back to that a little bit later on. But you can go ahead and do this hidden object puzzle on the left. Yes. So now we have a random antler just to uh, nip on our way. Go to the right hand side just behind the mirror there and we'll be getting a silver lion valve handle and ammo box. And by the way, I think I said there's only 18 collectibles in the game earlier. What I obviously meant was 23. I actually don't know where I got 18 from, but my bad, there's 23 collectibles in the game. But it shouldn't matter, you should be uh, following along and collecting them all anyway. But just in case you're like, bruh, what the hell. Um, grab the ammo box then, which is on the left by that demon, disgusting kitty, and the valve handle. Um, yeah, sorry, you're not the cutest little fluff ball. But we're back in the study now, and now we've got all three portraits. So this is another pretty much simple puzzle. Um, obviously, you've got instructions at the top left-hand corner there, but again, all you've got to do is just ma uh, put the people in the correct places, that's all. Where they, they've been married, and it all ends up going back to Nora. Uh, again, you can just follow along with exactly what I do, or you can just skip to the very end, which would be 10820.
And with that little beautifulness, we've got our first emerald. I mean, you'd really think that, you know, you're searching for it and getting all these emeralds and crystals and stuff. You'd pocket them, wouldn't you, really, and sell them later on. But, hey, man, it's video games. It's all good. So in the corridor, on this sort of uh, um, 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 deer-type thing. Oh, God, man, I just ruined that. But please, I cannot remember the animal. Let me know, please. Anyway, you put the antler on, you get the medallion. And now we will be using that trophy medallion on the ammo box to get a cleaning rod and cartridge. So basically we're making up the gun now. Just to be able to shoot the lock in the study. That's it. So now you use the oiled cloth, the cleaning rod and the cartridge on the damaged revolver to get the revolver. Again, all of this is just so we can shoot one lock. But we could have probably just got a hammer and then pocketed all the emeralds and crystals for ourselves to sell later on for a nice buck. But... Like I said, it's video games and they, they just don't work like they do in real life sometimes. So there we go. Then we got the one ammo. We could literally take it downstairs and just shoot the bloody thing as well. But obviously entities don't exactly care about being shot, do they? So there we go. Up to the desk. Shoot it. That will give us the third Nightmare Catcher amulet. Which keeps skipping through the book and it will be at the end. And then just go downstairs and do exactly the same as we've done earlier on. Remember the runes on the right. Always look for the symbols that are not on the left. That's it. Easy as pie. And then that'll be the second chapter finished. Hooray! So then, now here we are, chapter 3 out of 3, and then we've got to play a little bit of the bonus later on. So we finally got that uh, Venus flytrap. I mean, that basically just sounds like, you know, Pokemon with a sort of, you know, running out of ideas. No offense. Still a cracking game, though. Love Pokemon. But in the tree straight away, then you'll find your next pumpkin. So grab that. There is another collectible in here, which I forget to grab until a little bit later on. It's in the right-hand side. Uh, right hand, top of the tree, right in the right corner, you will see it, but I don't get it yet, but I do get it a little bit later on, so do not worry. But remember, there are two collectibles in there. Uh, now, as you can see, we're on the hidden object puzzle, which is just to the right of the tree, so go ahead, crack on with this. So that will get us a little rasp, raspberry, raspberry, rasp, rasp. Well, whatever it is, we got it anyway. So look to the left-hand side, and we're going to be getting another couple of items here. And we'll come back to this point in just a little bit. Look, actually inside the tree, and there's another two items for us to grab there. And then what we can do is use the ribbon on the hand broom to get a, well, working hand broom. <laughs> More or less. Then just nip over to the desk on the left hand side. You'll have to put your valve handle on first. Which is just at the bottom <laughs> below the note right there. Below the note. Come on you God damn dummy. Hey, there we go. See, I figured it out in the end. Always there in the end. I really don't know why that confused me. 
But then use the turpentine jar on the very left hand side. Obviously it's empty at the minute, but we will be filling that up in just a while so we can scrub that knight's dirty junk. Because he's too lazy standing there, not doing anything. <laughs> anyway, now we can go back to the mansion foyer. Uh, we'll be getting the... Uh, go to the right hand side. Knight, use the silver lion and the golden lion on each side. So silver on the left, golden on the right, and that will finally get us his battle axe. Again, he's not doing anything. You could literally just pry his arms open if you really wanted to, but anyway, anyway. Now we're off to the study. Go to the left there uh, in the study. Use the hand broom. Uh, if we go to the fireplace first, there we go. Come on, bruh. There we go. Use the hand broom. Get away the dust, and that'll get us a bent key. And then what we can do then is use the battle axe right there, just on the sort of right hand side of the fireplace, and that will get us the wind up key. Now go ahead, back, back, back out once to the corridor. And then what we'll do is go to the window on the very right hand side. Eventually when I get my bearings, there we go. Use the rasp. It's not a rasp but brie. It's like a file type thing. I, I don't know why they didn't call it a, a, a file. But there we go. It's all good. So we'll use that and then use the battle axe on it to get some pine sap. There we go, so go ahead and grab that, and then what we do, now we'll finally go to the desk at the very back there. Use the bent key on the little wooden toy soldier. And then we can finally use that on the uh, sort of little locked piece of lockness beside him. Now we get some catnip, and that means we've got to go back and see Ugly Cat. And I'm sorry, I know, you know, some animal lovers go, all animals are beautiful, but... Pff, they're not really, are they? I'm so sorry. There are some ugly animals out there. Look at the fish, deep, deep, deep in the ocean. Uh, on the right-hand side behind the mirror, use the wind-up key, and that will get us the second out of two emeralds. And now we can use the catnip on ugly demon kitty, and that will get us the heart of nature. Because the French say in nature are goddamn fantastic. Nature. I'm... See? I'm French. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? Go back, go back. Let's go back to the greenhouse now. And what we will do first, then, in the greenhouse is go and grab the second out of two collectibles, which is in the very right top-hand tree right here. It will come. There it is. Happy days. And now we will go to the desk on the left where our little science equipment bad boys are. So just remember there are two collectibles in this room. Should have collected them both earlier on, but, you know, it's all good. We've all got it. We're all caught up. Let's go to the science -y desk desk on the left, and what we'll do is use the pine sap and the, um, that's it, just the pine sap. So we use the pine sap and then use the valve. Sorry, I got caught in my own incompetence there for a second. So we'll do that, and now we can finally, we finally got our goddamn turpentine. We're sort of coming close to the end of this bit of mansion. We'll be going down the tree next. Go to the mansion foyer. Go and clean that dirty knight's junky little dirty area. Let's go ahead, use the turpentine bottle on it. That will get us a moon disc and we'll be heading back up to Attic. So now we can actually look at the mirror. And remember, if you still haven't got those two hidden object puzzle achievements, this is definitely, definitely one of the easiest ones in the game to get. It's for not making a mistake, and it is for completing it in less than 90 seconds. So obviously, pausing the game will be fine, but if you still haven't got it, this is definitely one of the easiest ones to do. So use the two emeralds on it, and then use the moon disc as well. And this, again, it's the sort of storytelling hidden object puzzle. This one is much easier than the one at the gate on the port on chapter one.
There we go, so hopefully got through that pretty much unscathed, but we got our healing potion. And now what we can do is use that healing potion on the heart of Nietzsche, so we can get the heart of the Nietzsche all, you know, completed and stuff. There we go, do that. Once we are finished with this, we'll be going to the greenhouse. We'll be using the heart of Nietzsche on the tree, get the nightmare catcher amulet out of it, and then we are going for a little dive down the tree, you know, sort of Stranger Things style from the first season. Except we ain't Bob, and we ain't gonna die quickly. Yes. Sorry, Bob. You are my favorite character. So now we are into the depths of it, and there's quite a few things to do to be able to repair our boat so we can nip on. So have a look at these sort of top right hand corner first. Grab the two fireflies and get the bucket out as well. We can't actually get what's in it just yet though. So we'll come back to that a little, just a tiny bit later on. So have a look in the boat, grab the oar and put it to the other side. Not that side, I don't know where I was off with it. And then we can Grab a little item for us there, but we should be good to go now. So go ahead, use the battle axe in the top right hand corner again on the net. And so we will grab that bit of netting. Put the netting on the wire so we can get a net and then we will use that net to and use the rasp on the bucket once again. And there we go. We've got the ship wheel emblem. And we can also pick the bucket up now as well. So then, hopefully we've got all of the required items. What we need to do now is put the glowing crystal and the fireflies and the glass paint on the strange lantern. And that will give us a lantern to see with, I suppose, which is pretty obvious, yes. But we're, we are almost done with this area now. Now all we'll have to do is use the brush with tar on the boat to sort of fix this bit of wood here. Who knew? Hmm? Glue, you haven't got no glue, make sure you got some tar with you, obviously. <laughs> Use the bucket on Jay, that gets rid of the sort of two splashes of pathetic brown dirty crap water. And now we can move on. Now, this sort of, th these next puzzles, they're not too hard. Um, we'll go forward first. Basically, you're just going exactly where I'm going. So, what we'll do is go forward first, and then we'll go forward this time as well. And what we'll have to do is actually use the strange lantern to actually get through the gate. So if you go ahead and press X to use, obviously use the strange lantern. What you have to do then is find the exact same symbols that are on the gate, uh, on top of the gate. It's that easy. All you've got to do, they're sort of, you know, they're not in any sort of two difficult locations. They are literally just peppered around on the walls. So... Have a look for it and it'll do it automatically. Easy peasy.
So I thought it was pretty, you know, pretty pointless there having a talk. You just have to keep on going. This time we're going to be beating this ghost with the nightmare cat, uh, the nightmare amulet. So again, it's exactly the same as it's been. A little bit trickier this time, so it might take you a little bit longer. But again, it's having a look at the runes on the left and picking the symbol on the right, which is not on the left, as we've been doing. Well now, doesn't she turn into some kind of pretty little ghost lady again? We're not doing that ghost porn thing again, don't worry. Um, so that will add another crystal. Now we can actually collect all four crystals. So go ahead and grab them. Grab them, grab them, grab them. Grab them, grab them, grab them. Sadly, we can't sell them for any money. We need to save Nora, I suppose. Because we, we, we're quite nice like that, I suppose, aren't we? Uh, move forward, there's nothing else in this room at the moment, but there is a collectible in this room on the very left-hand side, and that is where the pumpkin is. Let's grab that. So go ahead, take a look in the boat now. Let's grab an ore and the damaged ore lock. So happy days. Then look on the very right-hand side, and we will use that damaged ore lock to on the gear to pick that out. To be honest, it looks like you do it with your hands, but hey, who 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 am I to judge any video game character? They've been through a lot more than I have. For you know, not real life. <laughs> but now we can move on. This is the sort of main area that we'll be trying to go through, and it's the gate on the left we are trying to get through. So first of all, then let's take a look at the gate on the left and click on the sort of uh, paper and the wire. Make sure to click it f about four times there to get both items. Next, have a look at the wall and this sort of sphere ball looking thing to get your first out of two relief pieces. And there will be a Kraken key. Not a Kraken key, a Kraken key, <laughs> which we need, which is by this lever right here. Now, if you go ahead and put your wire on the ore, you will get an ore with a hook, which is just great. So go back to the shoreline at the minute, and you see the sort of hanging skeleton on the left-hand side? That's where we're going, and that is what we'll be using the ore with hook on. Uh, pull him a bit closer. You can do what you want with the skull. Actually, you can't. All you can do is grab the chest, to be honest. So do that, and then use the Kraken key on the chest, and that will get us our second out of two relief pieces. And then there's a tiny little puzzle. Again, it's not too hard. Hopefully by now you have got the... Eight mini games in under 60 seconds achievement by now because, of course, we are coming so close to the end of the game. So there's a nice Welsh dragon we need there, or it was just a regular dragon. Who knows? Oh, I know it was a regular dragon. But anyway, uh, put your two relief pieces uh, right here, and again, all you got to do is just sort of put the picture where it's supposed to go. If you want to see the finished product, of course, go to 129.40. So that's that bit done then, now we can get a mask and a button, uh, the the button where the mask was, pick them both up, there we go, and now we will be going back to the well which is straight ahead and we're doing another sort of mini little puzzle game here, so this one is basically self-explanatory, you obviously need to get the 
lighter masks on top, the grey masks in the middle, and the demon masks at the bottom. The, to be honest, I did mess this up. I thought I had it absolutely down and spot on and nailed. <laughs> and I messed up one of the masks, so... Probably easier if you follow me for a little bit and then, you know, do what you have to do, to be honest. Um, you know, whatever way you found it easier, because, like I said, sadly, I, I did mess it up. But, you know, it still doesn't take too long, so I'm going to stop yammering and let you guys concentrate. <laughs> See, I mean, we will get there eventually, right? <laughs> Should have been easier than I made that one out again. So hopefully you guys got it better than I just did then. So go up to the next part then. Directly in front of you, there is an ingot key. And we can't actually get rid of this bit of drain yet. But we will be coming back to this area. Obviously, otherwise we can't move on. So that's the name of the game. Go back to the well. Use the ingot key on the sort of sphere ball thing, which is on the wall directly in front of you right there. And that'll get us a button. Oh, button. Two out of two. Let's go back into the prison now. And when we get there, we'll go back to the hole in the floor. And now we can use the two buttons on these sort of uh, two little holes right there. Go ahead and click the first button on the left twice. And the right button twice. There you go. That, that's the easiest thing you'll ever have to do. Get a wrench then from the left-hand side, sticking out of the wall right there. And we'll be going back to the well. And we'll be using it on the sort of crank, which is on the floor. On the lever. Crank lever. I know. It, it all depends where you come from, I suppose, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> and then we'll be going back to the prison and we'll be using this uh, crank. I call it a lever, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's all the same. It's all the same. Nobody's blind, so everyone can see what I'm doing anyway. But we're using the crank lever on the broken one right here. Press that once. Happy, happy days. That will get rid of the manhole covers for us. So go ahead, look in, grab the gear, go back to the well again. And now we'll be using the gears and the crank on the um, sort of lever switch, lever switch, crank switch, whatever switch. <laughs> so just use the gears, use the crank again, and that will actually give us access now to the final remaining area in the game. So we've only got a few things left to do in this uh, little area, and we will be coming back and forth, but we are almost done with the game now. There's Nora. She could probably just slither her way out, but, you know, who are we to judge? Grab the collectible on the very right-hand side of the stairs there, the pumpkin once again. And we've got quite a few things to collect in this area. So have a look at this sort of broken elevator switch. First, uh, we're just going to get a whole host of stuff right here. 
Uh, we can just move on. There's something on the left hand side there. You can sort of see the skull, grab a couple of things. There's two things there, including a scraper and a sapphire eye, which is always nice. And then you see this little lock box. Well, there's little lock cages, a couple of items we need there as well, so make sure to pick them up and grab them. And then uh, we've got something on the right hand side there. What was that? Heavy tongs, rusty, uh, rusty saber, sorry. For some reason, I'm blind recording this this morning. <laughs> but go ahead, use the bunch of keys on the bunch of keys. Just keep interacting with it, and that gives us a bunch of keys. That's nice. Uh, <laughs> So what we'll do next then, we're going to be using our heavy tongs. And we'll be using them on this, ske uh, this skull so we can get the skeletal tomb. Or skeletal tome, sorry. Next up, we will use that skeletal tome to get a sun amulet. Nice! I bet all this stuff is really, really worth a fortune. But anyway, we're going back to the well now. We'll be using the Rusty Saber on that sort of uh, next to the Sphere Ball, which will get us that Dragon Emblem, finally. And Dragon represents Wales. Wales! Sorry. <clears throat> anyway, we can use that Dragon Emblem now on the chest, and we can get a Demon Horn. <laughs> demon Horn. Sounds like Demon Pawn. <laughs> that means two things. <laughs> Anyway, there we go. Oh, oh, man. Right, happy days. We can nip on now to the prison this time. And now we can use our bunch of keys on the very left-hand side gate where somebody has, unfortunately, met their end there. That's a pretty lousy way to die, in my opinion. But it's how it goes, and it gets us some stuff. So what we can get is a codex key. And we can also get a chain link and a wooden villager. Just, just like, you know, one of those little wooden toy villager things. Use the sapphire eye to get the blue head as well. And then as soon as we're out of there, use the rusty saber. Don't back out of it yet. Go in back into the prison. Use the rusty saber on the cobwebs and we can get a chest now. Which will also help us go to the treasury room. Which, again, for some reason, we don't take any of this bloody treasure. I don't know why. So the first thing we're going to do, instead of picking up all the gold and running for our life, click on the bat or angel thing on the left, use the code on it, and then what you'll have to do is press the uh, left wing once, the head once, and the right wing twice. Because it's got to look exactly the same as the picture. So the left wing once, the head once, and the right wing twice. So I know this looks like a mini game, but it actually isn't. So that helps us big time. All you'll need to be doing then, use the blue head on the, <laughs> well, the blue guy at the top. I'm using it on the wrong one right now. Because I stupid. Sometimes stupid is not good. So there you go, use the blue head, that gives us the wooden beast. And now what we can do is use the wooden villager and the wooden beast on the chest to get a demon skull. Sadly, there's no demon pubes like in the game Shadows of the Damned, which would have been a really funny and fantastic easter egg, but that's okay. I, I, I forgive artifacts for this. There we go. Wooden villager. Wooden beast. Happy days, there we go. And we're not quite done yet, we're going to use the demon horn, the left demon horn and the right demon horn on the demon skull to get a complete demon skull. And again, it's just it's a little touch, it doesn't just automatically do it for you, you've actually got to put the left one to the left one and the right one to the right one, whereas before it was just like, meh, whatever. <laughs> it's done, it's done. So here we go. So we are literally coming up very closely now to the end of the game, we're going to be using the sun amulet next on the treasure chest on the right hand side let's go ahead and use that and then you'll be solving what i believe is your last hidden object puzzle of the game so you enjoy it you enjoy this my friends
So that's getting us a horse plaque and... Oh, there we go then, as it turns out, I was right. That was our final hidden object puzzle, as long as you didn't use hints, which you shouldn't have. And I don't think you really need to use any hints in any hops ever, but... As long as you didn't, there you go, you will have unlocked that achievement. Sadly, you'll have to replay the game if you accidentally used a hint or anything. So, have a look at this sort of weight thing, whatever that is, and we'll be using the scraper and the demon skull on it, and that'll get us... Some red head. <laughs> that also means two things. Oh, man. My mind. It disgusts me. Anyway, go back to the treasury now. And we'll be getting our little red head. Huh? Red head? Interpret that however you want. Use it on the next one. That is going to get us the codex. So we will now have two out of two codex keys. Which we can now use on said codex. And... It'll get us the crystal as well, which we can use on this sort of mini-game puzzle right here. This one is also the very last in the game, which is just fantastic. So whip out your codex first, because the crystal is actually in the book. You've got to use your two codex keys. That unlocks it. That's the crystal done. Job done. Now we can actually go ahead and play this last mini-game then. Um... Not really much to explain here, you've just got to line the coloured crystals up with, well, with their same colour. It's not too tricky, just have a little think about it. Um, obviously you've got, as you see at the bottom there, you've sort of got a, a little respite, so you can sort of move them around, get them in a particular order, and you should be, go uh, should be good to go. But just have a think about it, it's kind of difficult to explain really. It's one of those that you just sort of able to do yourself get them in an order have a look at what you're doing get them in an order and you should be okay well and i just missed the top advice man <clears throat> nope sorry guys And there we go then, so that should be the last one. Now we have the legendary Doomblade. I mean, what a badass name for a sword. Seriously, what a badass name for a sword. Doomblade, so we've got that. Now we're going back to the stairs where Nora is held. Have a look at the cage on the right-hand side. Now we can use our horse plaque and on that, and then the chain link, obviously on the broken chain. Because what else would you use a chain link on? Probably, you know, sexual stuff, I suppose, but anyway. Uh, we'll get the cursed, sh uh, <laughs> cursed Horseshoe, which is always funny. That sounds like another Pokemon. And then we can just back out of this. We'll be coming back to this a little bit later. We need a Fuse, which we don't have yet. But we can use the Cursed Horseshoe now on the book. What that will do is get us... Or oh, the Skeleton Tome, sorry. What that will get us is the Acid. And we can actually use the Acid on the chain that's holding... I don't know, it's, it's holding the fuse. What is it, a special fuse or something? I don't know, but we've got it now anyway. And now we can use that fuse. And we can actually get ahead now to where Nora is. Hey, there we go. Beautiful, we're almost there. Literally, literally, literally. 
So, have a look at her if you want, but you need to grab two demonic eyes, one on the left, one on the right, very easy to find. We will be using the demonic eyes on the sort of skull ribcage thing. And, well, this is it. This is the final boss fight. So here is the horse that you've probably seen in early in Chapter 2. Now, this is probably a lot different to what you've done before. What you've got to do is, you see the meter on the left? Wait until you get gets all the way up to four hits right at the very top and then make sure to press it in the red meter so i just about do it there because obviously the more you wait the bigger the damage will be your health only goes down sort of random attacks no literally nobody attacked me here so i'm happy with that so all you've got to do just keep waiting until it gets all the way up to the top hit it in the red meter and this little bitch dies horse penis dies Oh, my apologies. I didn't even realize they counted that as a mini game. But again, if you haven't used any hints at all or without skipping, then you would have got the Grandmaster achievement right there. So that is that then, guys. This is the end of the game. But we are not quite finished with the achievements yet. What we'll be doing now is playing the bonus chapter. We don't have to play the entire bonus chapter. So we're about uh, just over 25 minutes left sort of of the game remaining so all we got to do is grab a few collectibles but the rest of the achievements are basically story related um so again there's nothing too difficult you know nothing nothing's really changed we'll just be going back and forth but once you get into the shaman's hut right here there are two collectibles that we need to grab one would be like a raspberry thing directly well more or less straight in front of you there and the second one is the pumpkin on the right hand side so be sure to pick them up first and I won't be talking as much through this I'll only be sort of talking when there's collectibles etc this again this is even easier than the main game was so literally you know just copy exactly as I do on screen and really you shouldn't have too much of a problem there guys and gals
So then, that was the sort of first chapter of the bonus chapter done, and I am wondering, how are you finding it without me yammering on? Is it a bit easier? Do you prefer me not to be talking and you can just carry on? Or does me talking help through the game? It's sort of a little experiment, this little bonus chapter, so if anyone does get this far, you know, let me know sort of what you prefer. If you prefer me not to talk or only talk at certain points through the game, or... If, you know, if, if you find it easier for me to talk, just let me know in the comments section below there, guys and gals. I would very much appreciate all the feedback I can get to make these videos even better for you. So then as we begin sort of chapter 2 of the bonus chapter, look on your very left hand side there, just outside the gate, that is your final pumpkin you would have collected, so you would have got the pumpkin master achievement. There's only one more morphing collectible to get, and that is as soon as we get out of the cage. And we're not even going to be in here for very long, I'd say there's about 10 to 15 minutes of this bonus chapter still left, but... We are getting as far as getting on top of the desk, and that will be all the achievements collected. Get in there, boys! So this is our exit out of here, so as soon as we leave, have a look directly above the cat, there's a little photo frame just to the left and above him, a little...
Yeah, so this is it. We're coming up to the end now. Put the laces on the shoe. You don't actually have to put the symbol on here. But how we get up to the desk, you actually have to look at your sort of uh, hints, more or less, your map. So we know what to do. Then go ahead, click on the desk. It's kind of kind of finicky, but that is that. This is where the last achievement should unlock, and you should now have 31 out of 31 achievements. Beautiful. So, like I said, I don't actually carry on with the bonus story. You can if you want to see how it ends, but... To be honest, I got bored and I think I was quite tired, so I wanted to go to bed at this point. Quarter to 11, I'm normally in bed by about 9 o'clock, mate. Trust me. It's harder when you get older, I promise. <laughs> but anyway, so that's it then, guys and gals. That is Endless Fables Darkmoor. I hope, really, really do hope you enjoyed the game, and I really hope you enjoyed the guide. We always try and make it a bit of fun, which is never a bad thing, really, is it? But again, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. Of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if this did help you. Always check me out on all my socials as well. I'm on ye old Twitter, ye old Patreon, and Instagram, and Facebook. All the links will be provided in the description below. But thank you so, so much for watching again, guys and gals. And I shall see you in the next one. Big love.